Hello guys and welcome to this video to talk about the management of carriers in different presentations, right? So uh, we already talked about carriers. If you guys didn't watch the first video about carriers, uh, about the concepts of differentiating carriers from dentin, the link will be here on the top right of this screen. And uh, if you guys didn't watch the presentations of carriers correlating the bite wings and the clinical presentation, I will also add this link on the top right uh, corner of this screen. So it will show up at some point, okay? Uh, without further ado, let's analyze those cases. And of course, I will tell you how I would pr uh, proceed based on science. There is even a recommended reference here for you guys, okay? From the International Journal of Dentistry, okay? So this article is also uh, very interesting and you should be using the literature in your favor and um, uh, as scientific base for your decisions, okay? So let's start with the top left corner uh, of this screen, so this case, and of course you guys are realizing that this is no longer uh, carries only, right? So we, we have the, the destruction of the crown and then uh, take a look at this with left of uh, a defurcation, right? So of, of tooth tissue, okay? So what is the predictability of um, this area here, right? And then, of course, the, there is, you know, tooth destruction even close to the alveolar crest. And, you know, what are the odds that you are going to rehabilitate this tooth and it will not fracture, for example. So in this case, the extraction would be the first option, okay? And then uh, we also need to realize that we have a radiolucent lesion, very epical radiolucent lesion, not well limited, okay, with ill-defined limits uh, and, you know, associated with both a of this, this molar, okay? Uh, the radiographic diagnosis is radiographic abscess because we don't see the, the limits, you know, well-defined and uh, which is saying for us that this is an acute alteration, okay? Don't forget that acute alterations, uh, radiographic alterations can also uh, chronify, so can, they can become chronic to, uh, to periapical granulomas, for example, and periapical granulomas can also become acute at some point uh, and this also could uh, become a clinical abscess as well, right? So in this case, the alterations were acute, were fast, and then we don't see the limits well defined, and there was actually clinically, you know, draining. The abscesses were, were draining through the, to, through the root canals, okay? And then you would extract this tooth, you would clean the socket, uh, you would irrigate with saline solution, for example. There are several theories accepted. Uh, and <clears throat> you, then you would need to rehabilitate this site with a fixed bridge or dental implant in the future, okay? Also, in the same case, we are seeing two initial carriers, but now my question is, are those carriers, interproximal carriers, really initial, okay? And then uh, you guys will realize that this is not only in the enamel, okay? If this is only in the enamel, then we can consider this uh, initial according to the ICDAS radiographic classification. But then uh, here we have the dentin involvement. Take a look at this. Even considering the quality of this radiograph, you guys can see that we have dentin involvement of this molar here and of the adjacent premolar, okay? And that's common. We have the, a small involvement of the enamel and then a larger involvement of the dentin, the area starts to spread over uh, in the dentin and that's exactly how it happens, interproximal caries, okay? It's one of the most common presentations. So you would need to restore this, uh, the, the mesial of this molar and the distal of this premolar, okay? Uh, now let's think about this other case here, uh, the upper middle part of the screen. And again, we have here uh, uh, interproximal caries, right? We have a buccal restoration on this molar, but that's, you know, that's fine. There is a little bit of perio, uh, PDL space widening, so periodontal ligament space widening. There is this root canal, but, you know, I still, maybe there are a little bit of condensing osteitis here, but it's still okay, right? So we are actually able to see the periodontal ligament space, the lamina dura, so it's fine. Uh, and then we, we do have the mesial carriers on this molar, okay? Uh, it's a little bit hard to say if there is dentin involvement, but it's, at least it's almost there because uh, we are in the EDJ now, right? So probably you would need to restore these carriers as well, okay? 
this is the maybe this would be the best decision for this case as well. And the dentin, maybe we can we can consider that it's starting to become a little bit radiolucent, although this is cervical burnout, this is cervical burnout, this is cervical burnout, okay. Even here we have a little bit of cervical burnout, but in this case of the lower left corner of your screen, then we have a different condition, right? So we have the interproximal caries, that's not cervical burnout, of course you guys noticed. Uh, and then take a look at the distance to the root canal, right? So the poop chamber is here, okay? So we are not even seeing the part of the poop chamber already because it's uh, atrophic and with a little bit of calcification inside of this poop chamber. And, uh, you know, the odds here uh, is that you probably, you guys will open the root canal, okay? So this is what happens in a case like this. You remove the caries and then uh, you start to see the uh, poke chamber, atrophic, but you start to see it. Okay, maybe if you, of course, you guys would do vitality tests and percussion tests clinically. Don't forget the clinical examination comes first before the radiographic examination, but then uh, you guys start to see the caries and then while you're removing the caries, you start to see a little bit of red uh, because of the blood in transparency, uh, if it's vital, of course and then um, you would need to open the root canal, okay? If you try to leave some caries in a case like this uh, uh, and then just put a, you know, a calcium hydroxide or something uh, and, you know, just a lining material and then a GIC, for example, probably the patient will come back uh, home and then the patient starts to feel pain, okay? So uh, sometimes uh, it, the caries, when the caries is not so deep, like the other case here, like this case in the middle, lower uh, part of the screen, you know, you remove the caries, it's, it's still close to the root canal, but not so much. Then the patient starts to feel pain after the restoration in the first two days, the patient takes Panadol and then it's fine, okay? So this uh, may happen, okay? If the pain uh, continues, and then probably the root canal was already infected and you guys still need to open the root canal because in many times the radiograph will underestimate the tooth destruction due to caries, okay? So always consider this as well, okay? But here, according to my experience, I don't think we, should, we would need to open the root canal, maybe, okay? But uh, uh, here, in this case, we have caries here and we, we would be able at least to, 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 of course, remove the caries and restore even redoing this restoration, this metallic restoration, okay? There is interproximal caries here as well, and again, uh, there is still some denting between the caries and the pulp chamber, although the pulp chamber starts to become a little bit atrophic here, so that means that we have tertiary denting being produced here already, okay? Even here in this premolar, okay, interproximal caries, but then most likely you would be able to restore uh, these caries, okay, and not necessarily performing the root canal. If you guys are asking, should you take a periapical radiograph uh, on top of, so over and above this bitwing radiograph here? Yes, absolutely, because now we may find periapical alterations. You want to see the periapical conditions of this case on the lower left, even here, okay, on this uh, an upper uh, periapical radiograph, for example of this um, uh, first molar would be also uh, useful because maybe we already have periapical alterations, okay? So you can, uh, when you need periapical information, then you need periapical radiographs. Bite wings are useful to diagnose the caries and the level of the alveolar crest, as you guys uh, might remember, okay? So uh, those, this is just uh, an analysis of some cases. Of course, we are going to do this more in the future, and if you guys have different opinions about the management or even about the diagnosis, please uh, give those opinions on the comments. Don't forget that we are here in this YouTube channel to exchange knowledge for the, bene uh, for the benefit of everyone, okay? For everyone to benefit from this, this YouTube channel, okay? From this dental YouTube channel. So if you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys on the next videos.